Dr. Dr. Daly behind the screen. Your I camera. Am. I am. Okay. I'm your camera make, still. I know. I'm going to make a dramatic entrance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we remind everyone that we are recording this event. Please stay on mute. You may type in questions using the chat box and we'll address these during or at the end of the presentation. We will also open the floor at the end so that you can unmute your mic and ask your questions then. And now for our speaker. Dr. Ryan Daly has been a cardiologist with Franciscan Physician Network Indiana Heart Physicians since 2010. He graduated from medical school at Boston University of Medicine and completed his internship and residency at Boston University Medical Center. He completed his fellowship in cardiovascular medicine at the Cleveland Clinic and in non-invasive cardiovascular imaging at Brigham and Women's Hospital, Harvard Medical School. He is board certified in internal medicine, cardiovascular disease, echocardiography, nuclear cardiology, and cardiac CT. So uh, welcome, Dr. Daly. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thought I'd have a little bit of fun with this. Um, calcium scoring is near and dear to my heart. Uh, really love talking about it. Thought we'd have a little bit of fun with this. After we get through the uh, slides, uh, I'd love to open this up. People always have a ton of questions regarding calcium scoring. Um, one of the other disclosures, uh, I do run the calcium scoring lab here. Um, I also sit on the, um, well, I did sit on the uh, uh, board at SCCT for uh, CT advocacy. So uh, with that, let's start, okay? So uh, Don already went through my disclosures, um, uh, Speakers Bureau for AstraZeneca, but not really relevant. So what is calcium, uh, 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 artery calcium scoring? So this is a low radiation CAT scan. It gives the background, it gives the amount of radiation similar to one third of the amount of radiation you'd get just from being alive, so one millisievert. So background radiation is approximately three millisieverts. You get about two just being on a cross-country uh, airplane ride. This is rapid, it's very cost-effective, it's low radiation, and it's highly reproducible. And it doesn't really require much in the way of special uh, patient preparation, uh, and it doesn't use contrast. And on the right, you'll see an a example of what we actually see. Uh, what's red in uh, the slide there is actually hard, dense, uh, material. It's either bone, you can see the spinal um, column in the um, uh, back of the slide and the breastbone in the front, and calcium actually has density very bone. So calcium scoring does a lot of different things. One of the things it does is actually improves patient compliance. Uh, an Eisner study um, randomly assigned uh, 2,000 patients to either undergo calcium scoring uh, or not undergo calcium score, and they found that when patients actually knew their calcium score, they had improvements in blood pressure, took their meds, waist circumference, and actually improved their Framingham risk score. So most importantly, we do calcium scoring only if it's actually going to alter treatment decisions or you think it's going to help your relationship with the patient to improve their adherence with blood pressure pills or cholesterol medicine or what have. So let's talk about a couple of different um, terms here. The absolute score is the number that you get, so calcium score of zero or 100. They also give a percentile score, and this um, is most useful in people who are very, very young or pe uh, patients that are uh, old, uh, older, I should say, like uh, greater than 70. Because if you're greater than the 70th percentile at 40 years of age, and this is a population we want to be very aggressive in. If you have a very low uh, percentile score and you're 75, this might be a patient population that we want to de-escalate therapy. In between those two age groups, absolute score is the best predictor of cardiovascular risk. So uh, absolute score is the best predictor that we have for uh, five to 10, um, 10 year ASCVD risk and should be uh, used to estimate number needed to treat and guide pharmacologic therapy. 
uh, the percentile score in MESA, which was a large clinical trial, is the best predictor of relative risk as well as lifetime trajectory and can also be used to estimate lifetime treatment benefit. Calcium scores are really reproducible, both intra-scan and inter-scan. Uh, and uh, between newer scan, uh, between scanners, a variability of about 12%. This variability is unlikely to result in reclassification of ESCVD risk, and is actually uh, similar to the variability we even get with lipid testing. So it really doesn't change treatment decisions based upon whether you see a calcium score of five or a 12 you're still going to be in that low risk, similar percentile. So this is a slide that's a little bit busy, but it says, when should we consider this? Uh, when should we, sh should we consider using calcium scoring? And uh, uh, based upon that, how should we treat them? So the AHA and the ACC have their own recommendations. ES, uh, European Society has their own recommendations, and SCT has uh, their consensus statement. But basically, this should be used in adults between the ages of 40 to 75, sometimes older, sometimes younger, that have a 10-year risk of approximately 7.5% uh, to 20%. Uh, if we're trying to determine whether aspirin or uh, statin therapy is really beneficial, in some patients, uh, specifically you can see in the SECT guidelines, there are certain cohorts that if they have a family history, perhaps if uh, we should consider if they're younger than 40, uh, and in patients that are older than uh, 75. And based upon the results uh, of this score, if they have a calcium score of zero, it can uh, basically translate into treatment decisions. It's reasonable to hold uh, statin therapy and assess in five to 10 years, so long as high-risk conditions are absent, meaning diabetes, are they smokers, do they have a strong family history? Uh, we can use percentile to guide uh, statin therapy. So uh, this is a really good slide, and uh, hopefully you can either take a picture of that or what, um, if you have any questions, okay? So right now, current recommendations are to use calcium scoring, as we said, in patients that are between the ages of 40 to 60 that have a cholesterol LDL between, LDLC between 70 and 189, and a 10-year ASCVD risk of between 5 and 20%. Calcium score is useful to decide on the need and the intent of pharmacotherapy. And this is a so in patients that are 40 years older that have a uh, LDL between uh, 6 and 7 and a 10 year uh, uh, ASCVD less than 5%, it's reasonable in those that have a family history. And it might even be patients that are 30 to 40 if they have a strong family history. Because if they have calcium, this does clearly identify a uh, cohort of patients that are of higher risk. For patients that have known ASCVD, if you've had bypass surgery, you have a AAA, you've had a stroke, um, you've had prior stents, or you have a coronary artery disease risk equivalent, calcium scoring is not, been, um, is not recommended. And it's not recommended if your ASCVD risk score is uh, greater than 20% either, because it's not going to alter treatment. So who should get calcium scores? Consider in patients that are older than 40 years of age, if they have diabetes, if they have the major risk factors that we talked about, um, smoking history, whether it's uh, active or significant, you know, frequently patients will say, I'm a non-smoker. Well, yeah, that was two weeks ago, right? Uh, low LDL, specifically less than 40. Um, uh, hypertension, or they're on meds for hypertension. If they have a family history of CAD, please note, family history of CAD doesn't actually go into your ASCVD risk calculator. Hopefully, a lot of you guys are actually, pick, you know, using um, a risk calculator of uh, pulling up Google and using that to calculate what their five to 10 year, five, uh, their 10 year risk is, okay? And if their risk ends up calculating between five to 20%, this can be really helpful to reclassify who's gonna get benefit. So who shouldn't we, uh, oh, oh, this is actually who we should also consider this. There are things called risk modifiers. Patients that have a family history of uh, ASCVD, this would be, um, men that have coronary disease, like a father or a brother that has uh, ASCVD, 
less than uh, 55 and female less than 65. Now that this definition can be a little sketchy. Did they die from this? Did they have a heart attack from this? Did they have a stent from this? So the data, the, the traditional definition of this is, is variable in the literature. Uh, you should really consider this in patients that have metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome has been found to be a very high risk marker. So if you have an elevated HOMA IR, uh, this is something to consider. Uh, Dr. Rao, I don't know if he's on the call, has done some research in, in this. So chronic inflammatory conditions, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, HIV, AIDS, um, and other inflammatory conditions uh, put patients at uh, markedly elevated risk of uh, accelerated atherosclerosis. Uh, High-risk ethnicities, South Asians, persistently elevated triglycerides, although some may argue that this is actually just a marker of insulin resistance and, you know, uh, similar to uh, number two. Patients with elevated CRP, this is another way of saying a chronic inflammatory condition. Patients with elevated LP little a or have a lot of ApoB, proto um, have a lot of ApoB uh, particles. Don't generally recommend this if you put them in the risk profile and their uh, risk comes out less than 5%. Why? Well, because you're not going to do anything with them. You're not going to start them on aspirin. You're not going to start them on cholesterol medicine. If their risk is greater than 20%, um, unless they're older, not, and not a lot of risk factors, ASCVD is predominantly uh, driven by age. So uh, also don't use calcium scoring in patients that have clinical ASCVD. Again, they have um, stents or bypass in their legs. They have IFEM or that stents or cabbage, they've had a previous carotid and uh, directomy, things like that. This is a level three, uh, no benefit or even more. So, interpreting the score. So, a calcium score of zero is a very, very powerful negative risk factor for future cardiovascular events. On the other hand, a calcium score greater than 300 is associated with a 10 year risk score of greater than 15%. This is to say that they have a 1.5 to 2% annual risk of having a heart attack or a major adverse cardiac event. And these patients benefit from a very aggressive LDL lowering and high intensity statin. Calcium scores greater than 1,000, as I'll show you, are a very high risk subpopulation. And the potential value of very aggressive uh, lipid lowering and implementing other risk reduction strategies should be strongly entertained. And this is additional therapy, adding on things like azetamide or uh, low-dose ribaroxaban or even insulin sensitizers. There's no evidence to support stress testing or invasive coronary angiography in patients that are asymptomatic, regardless of how So, in summary, uh, calcium scoring is a powerful uh, predictor of major adverse cardiac events. It's a great way to risk stratify patients that you're on the fence on, intermediate risk of the 5 to 20 percent. The only process that uh, deposits calcium in the corners is atherosclerosis. So a calcium score of zero, fantastic news. You're in great shape. If you have a calcium score of 300 or higher, well, you might want to call IHP. Let's spend some time and look at this slide. This tells a lot. This is a really huge uh, registry study. On the left, this basically shows that uh, there's 10,000 um, patients that were in this pool. In the right, there was over 25,000. The top line is, this is actually mortality, all right, over five years. So the top line is a calcium score of zero. So they have less than a 0.6% mortality. Look what happens at five years as far as all-cause mortality goes if you have a calcium score of 1,000. That's really big news, fellas. This is very, very powerful. So if you look on the right, you can look at 12-year mortality. Again, if you have a calcium score that's zero for over 12 years, you have a mortality of less than 0.6%. All these guys are alive, at least from a cardiovascular perspective. If you have a calcium score of 300, 7% mortality, that's out to 12 years. That's a big deal. So having coronary artery disease, number one killer of men and women, is a big deal. And this is, I'll show you, one of the most powerful ways to figure out who's at risk of bad things 
um, happening to them. Okay. So what about calcium scoring compared to carotid intimal media thickness? What about related to the CRP? What about BNP? As you'll see in this slide, calcium scores of zero is the strongest negative risk factor. If you have a calcium score of zero, mostly you are A-OK. -okay. Your risk of having an event over the next few years in the absence of smoking, diabetes, uh, or premature uh, ASCVD history is pretty low. So if you have those three things, your warranty and your risk, um, while isn't astronomical, um, isn't as good as a calcium score of zero without those high risk markers. So again, this just shows uh, the cumulative incidence of, uh, of MACE stratified by statin therapy and calcium score. So in the top left panel, you'll see if you have a calcium score of zero and you treat them with statins, what happens? Well, pretty much the number of events is really almost unchanged. If you have a calcium score between uh, uh, one and uh, 100, well, you see a little bit of benefit, so having some plaque confers some risk. On the bottom left, you see the difference between uh, uh, the blue line shows the incidence of MACE uh, without therapy, and the dotted line shows the incidence of MACE with statin therapy. More plaque, more benefit from statins. All right, and calcium score is greater than 400. You can see the strong separation uh, of curves and the uh, benefit that you get from STEM. So in summary, um, calcium score of zero is the strongest negative risk factor that we have. It's better than the AFCD risk calculator. It's better than uh, CIMT. It's better than CRP. Uh, in the absence of diabetes or smoking, or, uh, or a family history of premature ASCVD. Statin therapy with calcium score of zero is associated with very limited uh, short to intermediate risk reduction. So absolute risk reduction uh, with statin is directly proportional to the calcium score. So here is a uh, great slide showing uh, the power of zero. So you have the first study is a Heinz uh, Nivdorf recall study. Calcium event rate uh, is an event rate of 0.16 per year in patients that have a calcium score of zero. You got MESA, it shows that events uh, with a calcium score of zero was very small after 10 years. Um, uh, the uh, Sheregi study shows uh, 35,000 patients were in this, it showed an annual event rate of 0 0.03 for calcium score of zero. So Big take home, power of zero. Calcium score of zero really makes you very comfortable in making treatment decisions about whether they should be on aspirin, statin, or other uh, powerful risk modifiers. Okay, so how should clinicians use calcium scoring to decide uh, to use statin or add on therapies? Uh, so basically, if you have an intermediate risk patient, do a calcium score. If they're zero, unless they're a smoker or a diabetic, you don't have to give them a statin, okay? Um, if they do have those th three things, one of those three things, uh, you probably should put them on the statin. Now, if they got a little bit of plaque and they're younger, their lifetime risk is pretty high. So you can um, uh, consider initiating uh, uh, statin therapy um, in these patients. What I like to do is I like to put this calcium score in the MESA coronary artery disease risk calculator, and I get their reclassified 10-year um, risk. And based upon that, I have a shared decision-making conversation with the patient. Uh, all right, well, your 10-year your risk is this, and we're going to reduce that risk by 20% if we put you on step. What do you think? And frequently, the more plaque they have, the more likely they are to go on statins. Now, if they have a calcium score greater than 100, you should strongly consider putting them on statins, okay? And you can see the level of uh, uh, recommendation. So the St. Francis um, heart study, unfortunately not this St. Francis uh, heart study, but it involved 1,000 patients and they took them and they put those that had calcium scores over 400 
um, on statin therapy, and lo and behold, there was a 42% risk reduction uh, and a 6.3 absolute risk reduction of coronary events. So this was a really big deal. So statin therapy in corn, I mean, this makes sense, right, guys? You know, you have plaque, you treat them with statin, you have less events, not rocket science. So right here, you can see uh, this is a uh, number needed to treat uh, for statin therapy stratified by calcium score. So if you have a calcium score of zero, and this is the patient of, and this is the Jupiter uh, population, you have to treat 550 patients to prevent one cardiac event. Now, look if you have a calcium score of 100, only 24 patients to prevent a coronary um, uh, heart uh, disease event. So I think it's pretty reasonable. You say one out of 500, maybe you'll take your chances. All right, and again, this is with the patient population. But if you have a calcium score over 100, you only need to treat 24. That's pretty powerful, all right? Now, if you have certain other things, like you have a real high ApoB uh, concentration, ApoB levels, like 170, this, this isn't a necessarily a get out of jail free card, but as far as just using the number needed to treat, but it does guide a lot of decisions saying, these are the numbers uh, you tell your patients, and this is what I'd do if I were you. So if there's a diffuse distribution, meaning there's more vessels, this suggests higher risk than uh, more localized coronary artery calcification. So basically saying if you got one vessel, well, that's not as bad as having in all three vessels. So if you have uh, left mean coronary artery calcification, especially if it's greater than 25%, this suggests higher risk. That being said, there's still no evidence to support stress testing or um, invasive coronary angiography if the patient's completely asymptomatic. If they're going out playing pickleball and they're carrying a 200-pound deer and they're rucking that back through the hills of Mooresville, they're doing their stress test. Now, if they're a couch potato, then you can do an exercise treadmill test because they don't know whether they're uh, themselves. So a calcium score of 100 is associated with a 10-year ASCVD risk score. A 10-year, excuse me, a calcium score of 100 is associated with a ASCVD 10-year risk of approximately 7.5%. That is the guideline threshold for initiating statin therapy. Calcium score of 300 is actually considered to be a coronary artery disease risk equivalent. That basically means a 15% risk of having MACE over the next 10 years. Calcium score of 1,000 is atrocious. So it is similar to the risk of the Fourier group. And these are people you want to hammer, all right? You want to get that LDL way below 70, you want to make sure that blood pressure is really well controlled. You want to make sure that you're maximizing insulin sensitivity, considering not adding on Zetia, things like adding on uh, SGLT2s. You want to be very aggressive, throw the kitchen sink at these people. So current recommendations, and again, this comes from the National Lipid Association's guidelines on the use of calcium scoring. If you're wondering where a lot of these data come up, uh, are coming from, patients that have calcium score of 100 statin therapy is recommended. So that's your inflection point. And this is a level one recommendation. In patients that have calcium scores of 300, especially those that have calcium scores of 1,000, it's reasonable to do high-intensity statin therapy. So what's high-intensity statin therapy? That would be something like atorvastatin 40 or uh, rosuvastatin 20. And you're looking for a 50% or more LDL reduction or LDL less than 70 milligrams per deciliter, all right? So in the patients that have left main coronary artery calcification, multi-vessel disease, or score of 737, in the absence of clinically relevant symptoms. What's that? Well, angel quality, chest discomfort, stress testing, or uh, uh, heart cath not recommended. And this is a uh, level three recommendation for harm. So hopefully, if you're seeing a cardiologist doing stress testing in these patients, it's because they're estimating that their functional capacity is quite poor, uh, and 
you know, less than four maps, they're not getting, they're just couch potatoes, and you really want to see what happened when we stress these people. So sometimes you'll hear that statins increase the calcium score. Hey, doc, I heard those raise my calcium score. I don't want to take that. Well, it's true. It's absolutely true. Statins raise your calcium score, all right? But this is a healing process. And what they actually do is they de-lipate uh, the plaque. They take all the lipid out of it. And what happens is this plaque shrinks and it calcifies and hardens. So hard plaque is actually a protective phenotype. So hard coronary artery is the one you need to worry about. You need to worry about that less hard or the non-calcified plaque. So as the, calcif as the calcium actually shrinks, the plaque volume goes down. And uh, statins actually just modify this plaque. They don't actually initiate new plaques. And this data is actually uh, very well known in the cardiac CT literature. So if your patients have questions about this, just send, send them my way. Increasing calcium score uh, is associated with both bleeding and cardiovascular risk. So calcium score of 100 has nearly a threefold risk in bleeding and a fivefold risk of uh, cardiac events compared to those with a calcium score of zero. Aspirin is a benefit in those of calcium score uh, is not. Okay, don't use calcium in patients that have calcium score of zero. Okay, that's a typo on, on the second line there. All right. Aspirin is net harmful in those that have a risk less than 5%, regardless of the calcium score, and is net harmful uh, in those with increased bleeding risk. So if uh, one out of one in 200 healthy middle-aged adults treated with aspirin have a serious bleeding event, or basically 1% for both. So this is the magic slide. And what this shows, this red line here that you'll see, uh, going on the bottom is the number needed to harm. So that's about one out of 450. So you're going to hurt somebody with baby aspirin or antiplatelet therapy about one out of 500 times or one out of 450. So you need to treat almost 2,000 people that have a calcium score of zero to prevent one cardiac event. All right. Now, if you have a calcium score uh, of 100, you'll notice that you need to treat about 100 people to prevent one of that. So that's where you start to get that risk benefit. So once you have a calcium score greater than 100, this is when uh, we should start initiating antiplatelet therapy. Now, Dr. Bott has some really great literature about this. So heavier people typically require a little bit more than that, 81 milligrams of aspirin. And if they're diabetics, you might want to put 162 milligrams or even consider using clopidogrel. So patients that are, have a really heavy BMI, BMI of 40 or high 30s, I tend to bump, you know, pump up the volume a little bit if they have uh, atherosclerosis. So maybe two baby aspirins or even moving on to clopidogrel if they have uh, diabetes. And that's data uh, that Dr. Bob. So in patients that have calcium scores of 100, treat these patients with aspirin. Uh, it's very reasonable um, provided they don't have uh, a bleeding contraindication. I mean, obviously, please don't put patients that have platelets of 12 on aspirin. If they have a history of a recent ulcer, I don't care if they have a calcium score of 500, don't put them on um, aspirin. This is supposed to be a risk benefit, and you do have to be a doctor here, okay? For my AP. So the role of calcium score in patients that have super duper high cholesterol. So if you have an uh, LDL of 250, what are you going to go do? Well, you're you're going to treat it. Okay. So this isn't all. Of this is supposed to be in patients that have calcium scores between that 70 and 90. That's where that's the sweet spot for using calciums. Now. You can still do a calcium score in these people because if their calcium score is greater than zero, now you've identified an even higher risk pop patient population, and maybe you want to bring up the big guns. Maybe you want to do combination therapy, starting on some 
starting to add on some ezetimibe or a glycerin or a PCSK9. So in patients with severe um, uh, primary hypercholesterolemia, a calcium score of zero does not preclude need for evidence-based lipid lowering therapy. So this is one of these times that what I'm saying is this calcium score of zero only applies to that LDL between 70 and 190 and non-smoker, non-diabetic, okay? So what about diabetes? So in patients that have, that are between that ages between 40 and 75 um, and they have diabetes, you should be putting them on a medium or high intensity statin regardless of the calcium score. Statins help patients that have diabetics. In patients that have diabetes and a calcium score greater than 100, reach for the big guns. Reach for atorvastatin or suvastatin, uh, uh, you know, uh, Lipitor 40, Lipitor 80, okay? What about young people? So if you have a long-standing type 1 diabetic and they're in their 30s, uh, you could use calcium scoring to figure out, do you want to, want to be even more aggressive? Because if they have a lot of plaque, you want to be more aggressive. So this is a tool uh, for clinicians to make decisions about intensifying or de-intensifying therapy. Okay? So now, one of the things that I think is really important is the ASCVD risk calculator. Age drives a lot of decisions. And if you look at a, a lot of this, if you, if you start looking at your 75-year-olds, a lot of them have a 10-year uh, risk of over 7.5%. So if you have a 77-year-old that has an ASCVD risk score of I don't know, say 7.5% or 12%, and they don't really want to be on cholesterol medicine, do a calcium score. Because if they have a calcium score of like 12 or 15, their 10-year risk using the MESA risk calculator, it's a website. You just type Google MESA coronary artery disease risk calculator. If you put their numbers in there, you might find out that their 10-year risk has actually been reclassified to 6%. And then, you know, you do the shared decision-making, maybe statin therapy isn't right for them, all right? So this is a level two uh, A recommendation. So e even if you're older than 75, you can consider it. Now, this is mostly for doctors or for clinicians. People off the street, we put some hard stops, okay, because we don't want... Um, patients that don't have uh, appropriate risk profile going in and scanning themselves. Even though the radiation is low, we still want to follow guidelines. We want to follow the ALAR uh, principles. We don't want to expose um, our community to unnecessary radiation for the worried well. The uh, barriers or, or basically the heart stops that we have are not meant to stop um, clinicians for ordering appropriate tests. So if you order, put, you know, I want, you know, my patient, you know, John Doe, even though they're 38, to get a calcium score, you can do that. Just write a script and it will be honored by our treatment team. So when should we rescan patients? Well, if they're low risk, you can consider doing it another six to seven years. If they're an intermediate risk, it's usually about five years. If they're diabetics, in about three years, okay? So this is a fun slide. And what you can see is that if you don't have diabetes, this is in the upper right, you can see that the warranty period is about six years. If you have diabetes, the warranty uh, period is about three years. The bottom, you can see you have to get a baseline scan. If you have a calcium score of zero, your likelihood of having an event over the next five years is less than 1%. We show this a lot of data on this. But certain amount of percent certain percentage of those patients are going to convert, okay? And 28% are going to get some amount of plaque, and that's the upper left-hand panel. So what you're going to see is that about 10% of them have more than a calcium score of 10. Uh, about 3% have a calcium score of uh, greater than 100. So once you start getting plaque, your event rate goes up, and uh, you want to be, uh, we want to treat these patients a little bit more aggressively, okay? So repeat scoring, well, 
when it really depends upon what their baseline ASCVD risk is. So calcium scores increase about 25% per year. It's actually an exponential function. So scores in the zero to uh, 100 actually provide our best uh, risk discrimination. Uh, only measure this calcium score again if it will change your treatment decision. If the patient has metastatic cancer, you know, you're probably not going to do a calcium score. Once you got calcium, you got it. It's like luggage. You own it forever. All right. It can be healed. It can become biologic. It may become biologically inert uh, and uh, change your atherosclerotic phenotype as it hardens. So if you get them to lose all their weight, if you improve their insulin sensitivity, if you get their blood pressure under good control and they're exercising and they're on a um, no processed food, you know, plant-based diet, uh, yeah, even though they have plaque, their event rate might go down a whole lot. So coronary artery disease progression can't uh, be used to measure efficacy of statin therapy because the score does increase, all right? Scores that increase more than 25% a year uh, or increase uh, to a score greater than 400, this is concerning for accelerated atherosclerosis and somebody you want to pay a little bit more attention to. All right, so... This is really uh, the cherry on the top. Uh, we're gonna go through this uh, fantastic slide, again, from the uh, National Lipid Association's recommendations on the appropriate use of calcium scoring in prevention. So, far left, orange. If you got a youngster and they have uh, a family history of premature ASCVD, you can do a calcium score in these people, and this is the SECT guidelines. If their calcium score is zero, uh, in general, you can just consider just continue with lifestyle modification and considering repeat scan in about five years. If they do have plaque, however, you're going to want to be aggressive. In the middle, uh, the blue tiles, you can see patients with diabetes. If they have diabetes, you can do a calcium score on them. If it's zero, it's still statin therapy. It's moderate intensity. That would be like Pravacol 40. If they have plaque, you might want to be a little bit more aggressive. And it's greater than 100, now it's aspirin and statin time. So in our non-diabetics, if they have a risk, ASCVD risk between 5 and 20%, this is where we started talking about it. So if you go to a calcium score of zero and they're not a diabetic, you can defer statin therapy and you can certainly defer aspirin therapy. If they have a little bit of plaque, well, it favors statin therapy, but I put them in that MESA risk calculator and then reassess. If they have a moderate amount of plaque, that's a calcium score between uh, 100 and 300, this favors uh, statin therapy, also favors antiplatelet therapy uh, if they're not high bleeding risk. So, and you probably want to make sure their other risk factors are really well modified. And if they have a calcium score greater than 300, well, guess what? They have, AS, they have a cardiovascular risk equivalent you want to be really, really aggressive. If their cholesterol is greater than 190, their LDLC doesn't matter what the calcium score is. This is statin therapy, okay? If they have plaque, it might be statin therapy and. Now, what about if you're older than 75? If you're older than 75 and you don't know whether you want to continue this person on statin or they don't want it, they're not sure they want to be on statins, um, you know, especially if they have dementia or something like this. Uh, if their calcium score is zero or very, very low, probably can defer a statin because their 10-year risk, again, is going to be pretty low. If their calcium score is greater than 100, they have plaque, you may want to consider using it. And again, use shared decision-making um, uh, when you do this. So, uh, listen, thank you very much. Um, for having me. Uh, I'll uh, be very happy to entertain questions at this time. Dr. Daly, there's a couple of questions in the chat that um, Dr. Doring put in early on. Okay. Um, the, the first question is, um, is there any difference in radiation exposure when done in conjunction with a lung scan? Is there any difference well, uh, they should be getting getting 
it should be a twofer. It's basically just, the answer is yes, because I don't know if you can see me, but um, you know, pretend that this piece of paper, okay, is uh, the field of view. So we shrink the, sh the field of view, okay, like this, when we do a calcium score, because we're just concerned about the heart. Obviously, the lungs go from the apices to the diaphragm, so it's a little bit more radiation, but it's not like we do a calcium score and then we also do uh, a lung scan. What they do is they do a lung scan, and now you can get the calcium score off of that. What else? Um, there, it, another question that he had, um, I think he talked about it a little bit, but if you wanted to um, elaborate a little bit more, he says, is there any evidence that coronary calcium is reversible with aggressive lifestyle and or pharmacologic intervention? Un unfortunately, no. So once you have atherosclerosis, you got it. But what you can do is you can make it biologically inert. So, uh, and, and that means less likely to rupture, harden. Uh, and, and this is actually changing the phenotype uh, uh, of the atherosclerosis. So even though you have plaque, you're much less likely to have MACE, okay, major adverse cardiac event. But once it's there, it will continue to build and build and build unless we have halted it. So you can decrease the plaque volume by uh, 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 removing the lipids from the plaque, so they'll actually shrink down a little bit. And this was shown uh, on some IVA studies, Asteroid, I think was the name of it. Uh, and so there's some plaque regression, but not a lot. It's not like you go from a 40% down to 30. I mean, we're talking about from 40% down to like 37%, something that you knew, need intervascular um, uh, ultrasound to really tell the difference. The part that's really cool is when you do coronary cardiac CTA, you can actually show that the density of these plaques actually goes up and it hardens. And we know from a lot of registry data that these patients have much less events than patients that have less dense plaque. Thank you. Uh, Ryan. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Ryan, go ahead. Excellent, excellent presentation as always. Really appreciate it. Um, I, one observation uh, or one comment perhaps. Um, I've taken to lower uh, to make my goals for LDL less than 55 for these uh, over a thousand patients um, going a little bit by the um, European Society uh, recommendations, but I think the data is pointing that way. I don't know how you feel about that. The other question, if you don't mind, it's a twofer. Um, would you comment about uh, the pitfalls? Uh, in other words, the false negative result in the young patients. Um, sometimes I think it takes time to get calcium in there. So you could have some atherosclerosis that's just very soft and and um, and just have a, a calcium score that underestimates the true atherometer. Uh, would you come on, come on on that as well? Absolutely. So fantastic questions, Lewis. Uh, so as far as a calcium score greater than 100 in LDL goals, yeah, I think that sounds brilliant. Uh, lower is better. Okay, we really want to get uh, your ApoB concentration and, and particle number as, as low as possible. So shooting for an LDL-C of 55, yeah, I think that that's actually really good. And, and that's what I would do as well. Um, I also think that these are patients that we really want to uh, be very aggressive, aggressive as in terms of modifying all of their uh, uh, risk markers, including their insulin resistance. Uh, making sure that we put them on insulin sensitizers, getting them off of tobacco, uh, optimizing their blood pressure, trying to improve improve their functional status. So, yeah, patients that have uh, uh, very aggressive atherosclerosis, um, high scan, you know, you know, not greater than the 90th percentile, or uh, calcium scores greater than a thousand. Yeah, shooting for an LDLC of uh, 50 or 55. Absolutely. Now, pitfalls, another wonderful question. It does take time to make plaque. Uh, 
um, and that is for sure. So I get really antsy about uh, you can't use this. This is this is a tool to to help you. It's not something uh, to make you shut your brain off. Um, you you still have to be a clinician. Uh, you can get soft plaque, and if they have chest pain, this is not a surrogate for stress testing. This isn't a surrogate for uh, coronary cardiac CTA or, or something like that. You can have a calcium score of zero and have 90% blockage. Um, the calcium score does not equate to blockage. I have seen patients that have a 99% blockage with a calcium score of zero, and I have seen patients with a calcium score of 1,576 and 3 to 4% obstruction. So the number does not equate to uh, the amount of obstruction. And in younger people, you're exactly right. You can have non-calcified plaque and you can be falsely reassured. So if you have a you know, 42-year-old smoker that is a diabetic, um, you know, that's chain smoking Marlboros, uh, yeah, I put that patient on a uh, on a statin for sure. I don't care if the calcium score is zero. So you have to uh, use your clinical judgment. There's, you know, the Big two uh, are uh, diabetes and smoking. So if you, these are things that really drive risk. So um, be very aggressive in those patients. And, and uh, it does take some time for these plaques to heal. So that's why you want to get them on anti-inflammatory uh, drugs. You want to um, just decrease their systemic inflammation by treating their obesity, improving their insulin sensitivity, and uh, getting their particles. Down. So, uh, fantastic question. Dr. Daly, Dr. Kovacic wanted to um, piggyback on to this question. Hey, sure. thanks. Hey. So, I, I fully agree with uh, what uh, Dr. Janera and Dr. Daly have said about the lower is better. And I do believe that uh, we will be reestablishing targets below 55 shortly. Um, there was a recent physician paper looking at non-statin therapy that basically came out and said that in the highest risk patients. The only issue is that once you go beyond the generic medications today, it'll be very difficult uh, to get approval for non-statin, non-generic medication if their LDL is already below 70. So if you have somebody at 65 on the statin maxed out and on Zetia, and uh, you want to get them lower by adding on a PCSK9, you'll be hard pressed to get it approved this calendar year. I'm hoping that changes next year. And thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Thank you. There's a couple of more questions here. Um, one question is some workplaces have yearly calcium screening. No reason if calcium is zero. Ever a reason to rescreen in one year for positive patients? No. No, that's that. I, I definitely wouldn't do that. No. So it's so once it's positive, once you have a calcium score greater than 100, there's really no reason to rescan. If you have a calcium score of zero, um, as we went back to. Uh, You can see here, this is the rescan interval. Even in diabetics, the rescan interval is three years. Uh, in patients that are high risk, it's three years. So one year, no, that's too soon. Um, it takes time for these plaques to actually calcify and develop. These things take time. So no, I wouldn't do this every year. Okay, another question for you. Um, can scores separate soft versus hardened plaque? No, no. A uh, cardiac CTA, a coronary cardiac CTA, is, uh, is really the only thing that can uh, show different plaque uh, phenotypes. And we may be moving towards doing that in the future someday, uh, just not now. So you can miss soft plaque uh, with uh, a calcium score. But the way I think of a calcium score, I, I think about a positive score, much like I think of grizzly bear paw prints. It's not the paw prints 
that get you. It's the grizzly bear that eats you. But if you have no paw prints around your tent, it is highly unlikely you're going to get bit. Okay? If you have a lot of paw prints, if you have a thousand grizzly bear paw prints around your tent, I don't want to camp there. <laughs> so that's basically what it's telling you. Because where there's coronary artery calcification, there's non-calcified plaque. The two of them go together. So it's much more likely that you're going to have a major event with higher scores, meaning there's more bear prints around there. So, Dr. Daly, do you ever run across any uh, providers who are um, against calcium scores? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. And I actually debate them all the time on Twitter. So there's certain people, in fact, when I actually went through training, um, uh, my, uh, there was a number, my boss actually, Dr. Steve Nissen, he was very anti-calcium scoring. Um, but the guidelines basically show there's a role for this. So this is a tool, it, it, it can be like any tool, even stress testing, it can be misused. You don't have to calf every single person that has a stress test uh, with a some different score of one. You don't have to uh, do a stress test on a patient that has coronary artery disease every single year, right? So testing can be misused by um, people. So that isn't a fault of the test. That's a fault of the clinician or the person using it. You can make a decision to cast somebody who has a calcium score of six and no symptoms, and then that leads to a coronary artery dissection and irreversible heart failure. But that wasn't a fault of the calcium score. That was the fault of the clinician that decided to cast an asymptomatic patient with a minimal amount of plaque. So, and, and that actually was part of a debate that uh, Dr. Redberg had uh, saying that, hey, listen, this person had a positive calcium score and they were cast and it led to, it actually led all the way to heart transplantation. Uh, but it was a series, series of medical um, errors in judgment, in my opinion, and it was not a fault of the test per se. Now, some people would say, well, just put statins in the water. You know, just put aspirins in the water. Then you don't have to worry about it. We don't have to do all this testing. We decrease testing costs and you find all these pulmonary nodules and all the family doctors have to deal with all the pulmonary nodules and all of this and the, you know, the liver cyst and all this nonsense. You know, true, we could decrease testing, but you know, if you, if you treat patients with statins, you'll notice a lot of them don't like being on them. So you want to have a little bit of um, uh, strength behind saying, no, you really should be on this. So this is a way to use pharmacologic therapy a little bit more elegantly. Now, yeah, you could put statins in the water and uh, maybe that will work uh, on a population basis. Uh, but for me, uh, I would prefer to know what my number needed to treat is, how much benefit am I getting from this? Uh, and, you know, my, my favorite patients are educated patients. Thank you. Are there any other questions from anyone? You can um, ask them or put them in the chat. If not, um, I will uh, post the evaluation link in the chat and then um, Dr. Daly can be reached for any kinds of questions if something comes up after this talk. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Daly, for sharing your knowledge. Absolutely. So, hey, guys, text me through direct messenger on um, on Epic or hit me up on Twitter uh, or just give me a call if you got my cell. OK, anyways, thanks for attending. I really appreciate the time and, and hopefully you learned a couple of things about calcium scoring. OK, thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good evening.